Hey everyone, Clay from Clayviation.com. Today we're at the beautiful South Lake Tahoe Airport, KTVL, just at the southern tip of Lake Tahoe. Today we're going to talk about runways and wind and how they relate to each other. If you're somewhat new to aviation, the runway environment and its markings might seem a little bit foreign to you. So let's talk about a few of those. Starting off, every runway has a number on it. In this case, we're at runway 36 at Lake Tahoe. Now, if we've got runway 36, does that mean there's 35 other runways? Well, actually, runways are numbered based on their magnetic alignment. If you just add a zero to the end of the runway number, that's how many degrees magnetic you're facing if you're taking off or landing. So runway 36 is aligned with 360 degrees. Now, naturally, every runway's got two sides to it. You could approach from either end. So the opposite of 360 degrees, which is heading north, is 180 degrees, which is heading south. So this runway has a runway 36 and a runway 18. And depending on which direction the runways are heading, you could have any combination of two sides of 36 different runways around the magnetic compass. Ultimately, you choose a runway based on the way the wind direction is heading. And wind direction is me measured in the direction the wind is coming from. So if, you have a, if your winds are reported at 360, that doesn't mean that the winds are heading north or 360 degrees. It means that the winds are coming out of the north. This actually helps us because we choose our runways based on the winds and which, way they're, which runway they're favoring. So if we have winds coming out of 360, we take off on runway 36 because we're going to be taking off right into the wind. And we always want to take off and land into the wind as much so as possible. Now we can actually learn a lot about runways just by looking at them. For instance, these threshold markings are the stripes that are right at the beginning of the runway. They serve to mark the beginning of the landing area and they also tell you the width of the runway. For instance, these eight stripes mean that the runway is 100 feet wide. If it were only six stripes, it'd be a 75 foot runway. And if it were 12 stripes, it would be a 150 foot wide runway. There's also the runway center line that runs the length of the runway. Each of these little stripes are 120 feet, and the gap between them is 80 feet. So that means that from the beginning of one stripe to the beginning of the next stripe is 200 feet. There's also the runway aiming point. Those are these two thick stripes. That's what you aim for when you're coming in to land. And that's about 1,000 feet down from the start of the runway. Finally, you've got touchdown zone markings. Each of these stripes, they start with three stripes and then move to two, and then one stripe on either end. Those are 500 feet apart. You'll also notice these little black signs, these little black squares on the side of the runway. That just shows you how much distance you have remaining of the runway. It's in thousands of feet. So if you see a five, it means you've got 5,000 feet. If you see a two, 2,000 feet left to go before the end of the runway. OK, now back to the wind. There are actually two main ways that we can get wind information in X-Plane. Now we start off by setting the wind unless we've got some random weather setting. So if we go into our settings and we choose our weather, we can actually put in a wind layer. Now I've got a wind layer set right now, 360 degrees at 15 knots. And you can change the direction over here as well as the speed. And you can uh, change the altitude. So if you want to set some uh, different uh, wind speed higher up than down at the ground, you can do that as well. But there are two main ways to check up on what the wind is reporting in uh, X-Plane and, and kind of the real world, too. One of those is with the automated weather broadcast. Uh, you can actually tune into it. And if you don't have ForeFlight or some real weather source, you can actually look it up at airnav.com, A-I-R-N-A-V.com. You can look up the airport, and it gives you all sorts of great information and the frequencies you might need. In this case, 124.725 is our ASOS frequency, which is Automatic Surface Observation uh, System. And if we flip over in our COM1, we can listen to it. South Lake Tahoe weather, wind 360 at 15, visibility more than 10, sky conditions 5,900, broken, temperature 2, dew point minus 9, altimeter 2992. It's kind of funny they read that as wind, it's wind. So the wind is 15 from 360, which is right down the runway. Uh, the other way we can do it is to look at our windsock. And our windsock just is on pretty much every airfield, and it rotates into the wind. And the harder the wind is blowing, the further out the windsock is blowing. 
So we can look at that for indication too. If we don't have any uh, automated weather, we can fly over the airport before we land, see which way the windsock is blowing, and determine which runway to use based off that. So we're going to run a few scenarios here. The first of these scenarios is going to be a takeoff into the wind. So right now we got a headwind. We're going to take off into it. Now this should shorten our landing roll because we've got, I'm sorry, shorten our takeoff roll because we have a headwind. So we've got this, at this particular airport, we have a displaced threshold. That's what these arrows mean. So we can use this area of the runway for takeoff. And if we're landing, we could use it for rollout at the end of the runway if we were coming from the other end of the runway. If we're landing on this runway, we have to land beyond these arrows at the numbers at the start of the runway at the threshold. So we're going to throttle up here, and we're going to count how many arrows we um, pass, or just see how far down the runway we, we go um, using some of those uh, markings that we, that we learned if we get that far. And we're going to see um, how far we get on our takeoff roll based on the wind coming right at us. Then we're going to try it with a tailwind and see how it varies. So let's go ahead. We're going to throttle up. We've got our brakes held. Once we're at full power, we'll re release our brakes. See how many arrows pass this first one we pass. Looking for 60 knots to rotate. There's one arrow. There's two. Three. Four. Airspeed's alive. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, and there's 60. We can go ahead and rotate. So we're rotating at 10 arrows in. Didn't even get to the threshold of the runway, and we're taking off. Nice, strong headwind helping us get off the ground nice and quick. We're always going to take off at the same airspeed. That wind's not going to affect that. We're always going to rotate there at 60. Go ahead and climb out. Now for our next scenario, we're back at the same start of the runway, but I phoned up the weatherman, aka settings, and had the wind now changed to 180 at 15. So now the wind is directly at our back, heading in the direction that we're heading now, because we're heading 360, the wind is from 180. So now we have a tailwind. This should lengthen our takeoff roll. Now keep in mind, the airplane's going to fly at the same airspeed as it did before. We're still going to rotate at 60 knots but it's going to take us further down the runway to get to that point. So we'll do the same thing. Let's throttle up and let's count the markings and see how far we get. Smoothly advance our power to full. Once that's set, we'll release our brakes. And we're rolling. So there's, uh, we got our first arrow coming up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. There's the runway threshold, and there's 60. You can tell how much farther we went. Now, <clears throat> we were going much faster, so you might ask, well, if we're going faster, why weren't we flying faster? Well, that's because our airspeed was still not fast enough to fly. Our ground speed was much faster than it was before. We took off with a much slower ground speed the first time than we did the second time. And our wheels were spinning faster, but our wheel speed is not what makes us fly. It's that wind over our wings. So. Moral of the story is, always take off into the wind, or else you're going to have a much greater ground roll. For our next scenario, we're going to try a challenging crosswind into the same airport. So now we're on final approach to runway 18 with a 15 knot crosswind. So our wind is coming directly out of the west, which is to our right as we approach here. Now, if you'll notice, in order to stay aligned with the runway, I'm having to turn my nose a little bit to the right, fly into the wind a little bit to stay aligned with the runway. So to counter our crosswind, we're actually going to begin by straightening the nose out. But if we straighten our nose out with the runway, we're actually going to start to get blown off to the left by the wind. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to use a combination of right aileron and left rudder. I'm going to put a little right aileron in, a little left rudder in, and we're going to find the right combination of what keeps our longitudinal axis, the length of the airplane, straight down the runway, but also counteracts that wind. So now our wheels are going to be straight down the runway. If we crabbed all the way down with our nose turned to the right, we'd have side loading on our wheels because they aren't straight down the runway. So we're just kind of working, working that right aileron, working that left rudder, and trying to stay on this center line here as we approach. Our upwind wheel, which is our right wheel, is going to touch down first followed by the left. And as we roll out, we're going to maintain our right aileron to make sure the wind doesn't pick us up and blow us away. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel. Hope you're able to play around with some of these wind settings on X-Plane. Most importantly, enjoy your flying.